Well, this is a little out of the ordinary. This is a story of how I rebuilt an old 1947 Round Ram M-Head Bridgeport milling machine. There are chapter markers below if you want to skip ahead to any of these particular sections. And there are links in the information section below the video for access to these documents which may prove helpful. A friend of mine in the New England Model Engineering Society at the last meeting was offering an old M-Head Bridgeport mill for sale for $300. I couldn't resist. I told him I would take it under two conditions. One, it had to fit in my basement, and two, I would need some time to move it since I had done no planning. We shook hands on the deal. After some email exchanges, it was determined that it would indeed fit in my basement exactly where my old current mill of Clossing 8520 was sitting. The old round ram M-head Bridgeports were the shortest mills that Bridgeport ever made. This one had a 32-inch table, the smallest Bridgeport ever produced, and it had a 9-inch knee instead of the now more common 12-inch knee. The Bridgeport came with a sort of homebrew one-phase to three-phase rotary converter. This was an idler style arrangement with a large heavy motor. The owner also offered me a free replacement C-faced single phase motor and an aluminum plate suitable for mounting it and a few Morris Taper II collets, a one half inch, a three eighths inch, and a one fourth inch. I took the collets, but I passed on the motor accessories. I knew that I would power the mill with a VFD, that is a variable frequency drive. So that saved me hauling away the two extra heavy motors. Before moving it, we lightened the mill up by removing the head, the motor and the table. The head and motor came off easy. The table caused us some head scratching. First, we removed the original Bridgeport longitudinal power feed assembly, which I did not intend to use. Then we thought we would just slide the table off the end. What we didn't account for was the extreme wear. As the table moved off center, it tightened up considerably. After we discovered how to loosen the adjustable gib, it came off easily. I managed to put the motor, the head, the longitudinal power feed, and the table in the trunk of my 2001 Mustang GT Coupe. I arranged for help from a friend with a flatbed trailer that he used for moving cars. The seller's neighbor had a brand new backhoe. We rolled the milling machine out of his garage onto a homemade pallet with four casters. His neighbor wrapped a chain around the ram, picked it up with his backhoe, and sat it on my neighbor's trailer. We were a little anxious while the backhoe laid the mill on its back, but it went over without any fuss. After we drove the trailer with the mill chained down to it, we called the local tow truck. For $35, he picked up the mill with a sling around the ram and slid it down the basement bulkhead stairs on two 2x10 two planks into my basement. At this point, we had the mill in my basement and proceeded to take it completely apart. Here's a picture of the column after I chipped off the worst parts and cleaned it up. This is the way Bridgeport finished their cast iron parts in 1947. First they apply a layer of black shiny stuff that's very thick and acts much like our present day Bondo, although with a considerable better finish. Then they smooth it all out and finish it and put a nice gray coat on top of that. I cannot say that Bondo will last 57 years or more in the shop. But I can say that the skim coat that Bridgeport applied was starting to lift off in areas that had seen some stress and even in some of the protected areas. I removed the old paint and the skim coat mostly by hand. I would have liked to just blast it off with some easy method. I tried various sanders, wire brushes, but in the end what worked best for me was chipping off with an old worn out straight slot screwdriver. My second favorite tool was a very nice wood chisel. Do not cringe, I have a Tormac Super Grind and am perfectly capable of resharpening the edge on the wood chisel to a better than new condition. Refinishing is simple enough. Clean it up, chip off the bad paint, and apply new paint. 
The devil is in the details. I basically scraped everything down to completely bare metal. Then I completely covered everything with Bondo over the entire assembly. At that stage, it was all pink. Then I sanded it with power sanders and by hand for hours. Then I filled in all of the per imperfections with Bondo glazing putty and spot putty. Now it looked pink with dark red spots. Then I scraped again, filled with glazing putty again, and repeated this cycle three or more times until perfect. Then I sprayed Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer light gray on the surface. Invariably, this would expose more imperfections that I had not seen, so I would again apply glazing putty and hand sand. Then I added another coat of primer, more glazing putty, more hand sanding, another three or more times. The last step was applying paint. The paint I chose was Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel, smoke gray, from Walmart. I cannot swear that this is an extra hard or that it lasts a long time when exposed to grease, but it was darn handy to buy and so far I have no complaints. The column was the largest single piece of the mill. I kept it on the homemade pallet skid and did all my refurbishing right where it landed from the move at the door to the basement bulkhead. I put the knee on the column with a chain hoist because I could not pick it up by myself. Before I did this, I spent many hours hand scraping the dovetail precision surfaces and the adjustable gib. The inside of the knee was by far the most messy part and not at all fun to clean up. I would wipe out goop and swarf and spray with some WD-40 and wipe some more, then spray off gunk again. I thought it would never end. When I took the knee apart, I discovered one broken part, a bearing cap. I priced one through high quality tools at $31.50 and I decided to build my own. After many hours of work on the mill, I was given the chance to take an early retirement package when Hewlett Packard bought out Compaq. So we sold the mill and moved from Massachusetts to Arizona. I still had a lot of pieces I haven't even touched yet. Our moving costs were a dollar a pound. Now remember, this mill cost me $300, but it weighed 1,900 pounds. The ram just needed a quick cleanup. I polished the uh, chrome looking surface so that it would slide easier in the base and then I only had to repaint the two ends. When I finally got to finishing off the turret, it was really fun compared to the other bridge port parts. This was um, in bad shape uh, cosmetically, but everything worked perfectly. It was just a matter of cleaning up and polishing. To bring out the shine on some of the cast iron surfaces, such as the graduations on the bottom of the turret, I used a combination of a wire brush and an abrasive flap wheel. I could get the best finish with the flap wheel, but they wore out fast and I had to replace a lot of them. I cleaned and finished the saddle before I scraped it. After scraping it, I decided to install a one-shot lube system. In the end, I had to sand and paint again to repair all of the nicks and scratches from handling it. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.